بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I first want to congratulate the people that have really brought this extraordinary celebration of books and the written word to life. The Bradford Literary Festival, I think, is a it's a wonderful achievement, and I wish all of you the best of success. Keeping the word alive is very important. Uh, we're told that in the beginning was the word, that everything began with the word, kun faya kun, be, and it is. And the kedima is what we were gifted with, really, as a species. What makes us human and what makes us distinct from the other creatures on this planet is the level of sophistication that our language holds. Other creatures can clearly communicate with one another. The bee communicates to its drones uh, and does her little dance to show where the flowers are. Ants certainly have some levels of communication. We know that whales are communicating with one another. Birds seem to uh, communicate also. Certainly our cats communicate to us their needs through their constant whining when they don't get what they want. But what we have is the ability to abstract, to take the universal out of the particular, to speak really about the most complicated and complex things in, in, in the world. Ideas like liberty or justice or compassion or mercy or forgiveness. Ideas that inspire us and also ideas that relate to the dark side of our human condition like tyranny and oppression and racism and sexism and misogyny. But the fact that we can speak about these things, we can articulate what's in our hearts is, is a great gift. And books are one of the ways that we're able to convey that to people that come after us. And this is why it's, it's quite stunning that civilizations preserve all of that knowledge and transmit it to the future generations through the protection of, of, the, of the written word. And, and our civilization, the, the Muslim civilization, and I can say the Western civilization, because those of us that are in the West, whether uh, originally or as immigrants to the West, this is uh, our civilization because whatever's good in any civilization is according to our Prophet it's the property of, of the believer, the believer in good, the believer in God. And wherever they find it, they have more right to it because they'll use it uh, for, the, for, for the betterment of themselves and of society. So it's, it's, it's a great uh, civilization that we have and that we have acquired through migration. One of the most important subjects, and a much neglected subject in our current world, is what is called metaphysics. Metaphysics originally uh, was actually an editorial uh, choice. Uh, ta meta ta physica was how the book on metaphysics of Aristotle was placed after the book on physics. So he actually uh, called it the first philosophy, which is really the, the philosophy of being. Why there is something rather than nothing. What is the one? What is the many? Um, how do they relate? Uh, what, what is um, the essence of things? And what are the attributes that make up those essences? And what's the difference between an essence and an attribute? These are the great topics of metaphysics. And metaphysics is actually ends in theology. So it, it's really a preparatory study to arrive at the cause of all causes, which is the first cause in metaphysics. And so the modern people, because of the materialistic world that they have, as Laplace, when 
he wrote a book called Mechanique Celeste, Celeste which is the uh, celestial mechanics. He was an engineer and an astronomer who wrote a book, several volumes, and he gave it to Napoleon. Well, Napoleon read it. Napoleon, in his own right, was somewhat of an intellectual, but he read the book and he asked him, how can you write a book about the heavens and, and there's nothing in it about God? And uh, Laplace answered him, he said, I had no need for that hypothesis. And that really sums up the modern attitude towards God. In other words, we can explain things now without God. This is the basic premise of materialism. And yet, there's something that strikes most of us as just unacceptable there. The idea that something can come out of nothing. Um, this is the fundamental argument of the Kalam cosmological argument is that uh, you can't have an infinite regress uh, and you also can't have a, a circular type of situation. So the chicken or the egg. Did the chicken produce the egg? Uh, if so, what produced the chicken? If the egg produced the chicken, what produced the egg? This is a kind of circular reasoning that uh, drives people mad. So that idea of getting back to the science of metaphysics is actually really important because everything comes from that basic understanding. If, if you only have a view of the material world, if that's all there is, then you have limited your entire perspective on what can be seen, felt, touched, tasted, heard. Uh, that, that, that's it. That's your world. Despite the fact that even our physical scientists tell us that 90% of the universe, we know it's there, but we can't see it. So even they acknowledge. Or the fact that they talk about these subatomic particles that they've never seen, but they know they're there. So they, too, have a faith in unseen things. And the idea somehow that metaphysics is, is, is poppycock, as uh, Hume and, and others would have it, is, again, I think the result of never having studied it, because it's actually quite an extraordinary science that has, of course, its own axioms and postulates that have to be accepted in order for it to work, but that's the nature of all sciences. Uh, you cannot do Euclidean geometry without accepting his definitions, his axioms, and his, and his, his, uh, his postulates. So, we uh, have started our curriculum series with really looking at where we should all start, which is where did all this come from? And what is behind it? And what is sought from us? So to that end, we have just, alhamdulillah, produced a book by uh, my brother Faraz Khan, who's a young, uh, relatively young theologian, mutakallim uh, in Arabic, and uh, somebody who studied for many years with some serious scholars of this science, and has translated and annotated a very important work by Imam al-Sabuni, uh, which is uh, the Al-Bidayah. So it's the beginning, really, of theology. It's looked at from uh, a Central Asian perspective, which is called the Maturidi school, uh, which differs slightly from the other uh, Kalam schools in the Islamic tradition. The Mu'tazilites, obviously, the, uh, the what are called the rationalists sometimes. And then the Ash'arites, or the Ash'a'ira, who are between naql and aql, they they have rationalist aspects and then they have traditionalist aspects. So he has uh, translated this and annotated it and has some really, really excellent uh, appendices that deal with, for instance, a very good explanation of the Kalam cosmological argument, which is really, in some ways, the last argument standing. It's an argument that was developed by uh, Muslim scholars, Muslim scholastics, and is now used by Christian uh, apologists for their own tradition. So the very formidable theologian, William Lane Craig, who 
did his PhD on this uh, argument and has always acknowledged the Muslim contribution to this argument to his credit, the, despite the fact that he is also a polemicist against Islam. But he, he is a formidable intellect. He's a well-trained uh, philosopher, and, and I think he, he's done a great service by promoting that argument because while m believers do not bring forth these arguments to prove the existence of God, the reason that they have had these arguments is to show that belief in God is actually a rational proposition. It's not irrational to believe in God. It's actually more rational to believe that there is a, an omniscient, omnipotent uh, creator behind creation than that simply popped into existence out of nothing. Uh, that, it's more rational to believe that. Whether that's a personal God uh, or whether that is an impersonal God, that obviously is another matter, and that's where you'll get into religious belief. But there are many people, like deists, for instance, people that did not adhere to any particular religion that nonetheless did believe that there was uh, a source behind this that was intelligent, knowing, uh, and, um, and purposeful. So I think for most of us, because of the providential nature of our lives, we actually have concluded that there is a personal God. Prayers are answered, not, not always the way we like them, but prayers are answered. And so I hope people uh, will look at this work. It's, it's a very worthwhile uh, piece of scholarship. Uh, it's accessible. It's not a difficult book. It would be better, obviously, to study it with a scholar. But unfortunately, we don't have the type of access in the past. And there are online resources for these sciences now. But uh, it is an accessible book. And I think uh, there's great benefit in it. So I really hope that uh, you'll support the Zaytuna curriculum series and uh, perhaps uh, purchase this book, which goes also to supporting more works like this. And in conclusion, I just again congratulate the sponsors and the people behind this uh, Bradford Literary Festival and uh, I, we should celebrate um, books and we should celebrate knowledge and let them rejoice in, 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 in knowledge and in, the, uh, and in revelation because it's so much better than the stuff of this world that others are preoccupied with gathering. So may Allah bless you, bless the people of Bradford. I have very fond memories in Bradford. Uh, even when I was very young, when I was uh, 18 years old, going up to Bradford in the 1970s and meeting uh, uh, some of the really wonderful uh, people that were there at the time, a lot of people from Pakistan who had immigrated uh, to and were working in factories and yet they would uh, build mosques and do so much for the community. So I have great fond memories of my time there and, and, I, and visiting it over the time. After 9-11, I came to Bradford at, when they were having the riots and, and things. And I remember speaking. There was about 5,000 people there. It was quite, quite an extraordinary event. And uh, at the time, I suggested that the people of Bradford, the Muslims of Bradford, should not be rioting, but really thinking about how they're going to run the, uh, the police uh, force, how they're going to run the fire department, and how they're going to uh, take care of the, uh, the post office, and because this is the reality of some of the cities of England, which are going to have um, majority Muslim populations, and we want to see Islam as a positive force. We want to see it where the national front would feel ashamed of themselves when they see the good that the Muslims can bring, instead of uh, feeling resentment for people that have, uh, in their perspective, taken over their country, despite the fact that their ancestors took over a lot of the countries of the people that have immigrated to England. So, may Allah bless all of you and increase you and elevate you, inshallah, and make you people of the word. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.